31 criminal charges against PG&E have been filed today in just one Northern California County. The charges stem from fires that the utility is accused of sparking. And good evening, I'm Jana Katsuyama in for Christina Rendon. And I'm Andre Senior. PG&E finds itself criminally charged for the death and destruction left behind by several wildfires in Shasta County. The CEO of the company says they may be responsible for the fires, but no crimes were committed. KTV's Tom Baker joins us with the announcement made by the Shasta County DA and the PG&E's response. Tom. Well, this is yet another black eye to a utility that can ill afford such huge liabilities, which at some point can't help but to affect shareholder value and most importantly, consumer rates. So a fair question arises. Is this a case that may actually force PG&E to become a truly public owned utility? On Friday, the Shasta County District Attorney announced PG&E is now charged with manslaughter for the deaths of four people who died fleeing from the Zog fire a year ago. We have sufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the Pacific Gas and Electric Company is criminally liable for their reckless ignition of the Zog fire and the deaths and destruction that it caused. Prosecutors say the September 27, 2020 Zog fire was caused by PG&E's failure to properly maintain a pine tree near a power line. It fell into that line, setting off the 56,000 acre fire that destroyed 204 structures. The tree had been marked by PG&E for removal back in 2018. In all, the 31 count indictment charges the utility with 11 felonies and 20 misdemeanors for this and three other fires in the last 18 months. One of the primary reasons to charge a corporation criminally is a finding that illegal behavior is widespread, it's serious, it's offensive, and it's so persuasive that the only appropriate action is criminal charges. We've accepted CAL FIRE's determination reached earlier this year that a tree contacted our electric line and started the Zog fire. We accept that conclusion, but we did not commit a crime. New PG&E CEO Patricia Poppy, who vowed to be a different kind of leader, issued this prepared statement to the media, not subject to reporters' questions. I came to PG&E to make it right and make it safe, which is a commitment that my 40,000 co-workers and contract partners all share. They have dedicated their careers to it. Criminalizing their judgment is not right. Failing to prevent this fire is not a crime. A judge and jury will ultimately decide unless uh, PG&E settles. The CEO's full statement can be viewed on our website, ktvu.com. Back to you. And uh, Tom, you mentioned that the PG&E CEO is new, but have any of the fires happened under her watch? One has. It was called the Woody Fire. It happened last month. Uh, it is not clear at all who's responsible for it, so we need to say that at the outset. But she only got into the office, uh, so to speak, uh, in January. So. She's done a lot since then. She's done a lot to make sure that many more lines are being uh, put underground. She's done a lot to pick up the culture of PG&E to be far more concerned about safety, no matter how far down the ladder you are. And he, she even calls her fellow workers co-workers, not subordinates. So she certainly uh, has uh, a knack of saying the right things. Whether or not that's going to help in this case remains to be seen. It certainly does. Tom Baker reporting for us live. Tom.